Welcome into First Take on a Tuesday. Thank you so much for hanging with us. We've got you covered from both coasts today. Skip and I are here in Bristol. Stephen A., as we can see, you're in my old stomping ground, downtown L.A. How's everybody what's, doing? What's going on, y'all? How you doing? How you doing? In my old stomping ground, L.A. Mm. And, that was a long, I, long, I, long time ago, man. Yeah, That's when but, I was a kid. Wait a second. <laughs> Molly and I are in Bristol, Connecticut, yep. but once again... Stephen A. gets to do the show from Los Angeles mm -hmm. again and again and again. How do you pull this off? Well, I hop on a plane. I pay <laughs> yeah. my own way here. Yeah, and right. I, 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 Probably I'm, I'm your on, own plane. I'm on, I'm on yeah. a mission to make things happen. You know me. I'm never satisfied. Yeah. I'm always looking to, to yeah. make things happen. Yes. I'm sure yeah. you did last night. Yes, it's, yep. a oh, it's a yeah. tough life. Somebody's mm -hmm. got to live it. All right, mm -hmm. guys, like that. Mm -hmm. we got a lot to get into today. Coming up, LeBron uh -huh. showing his love for his squad on the Graham, posting a shout out to Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving. Is there an underlying message, though? We'll break that down. Plus, Peyton Manning says he hasn't been able to feel his fingertips the entire time he's played in Mile High. How much has that affected him, if any? We'll discuss that. But first, the number one and number two overall picks now have two games under their belt. We saw Jameis Winston and the Bucks square off against the Bengals on Monday Night Football last night. So far this preseason, Winston 17 of 32 for 221 yards, no TDs, one interception, while completing just over 50% of his passes on the ground, five rushes for 19 and two TDs. Now, Marcus Mariota, on the other hand, of course, they're linked here. Is 12 of 16 for 153 yards. Also, no TDs. Also, one pick, but a 75 completion percentage. Stephen A. It's early, but who's looked better to you thus far, Mariota or Winston? Well, I'm going to say uh, Mariota because I think that over the first two games, he's looked better. Uh, Jameis Winston obviously completed all three of his passes last night, uh, tweaked his ankle a little bit after getting sacked by Atkins and Mulberry, if I remember correctly. Uh, but obviously, he looked considerably better than he did in his first performance in his first preseason game, whereas with Mariota, he struggled at the start of his first season, first preseason game ever, but then ultimately got it going. And when you think about the things that they're saying, with the Jameis Winston, they talk about you know, his smarts, of course, because it's definitely there in terms of his football IQ. But primarily, they talk about his ability to stand in the pocket and make the necessary throws. What you're seeing from Mariota is a guy that's scrambling out of the pocket. He seems a bit more mobile. He's throwing scrambling to his right. He's throwing scrambling to his left. And on top of it all, he's shown a little bit of pocket presence thus far as well. And his IQ is considered to be off the charts. A clear understanding of what's going on and obviously... Uh, uh, the turnovers at a minimum and the completion percentage, completing 75% of his passes is something that's incredibly important because when you have that level of accuracy, it elevates the level of faith that folks have in you. They give you more opportunities to make things happen. They're not as reticent to sit there and hold you back and position you to play uh, a bit more cautious, shall I say. So when I look at it from that perspective, doesn't mean that Mariota is going to be better than Jameis Winston. Again, all we're going by is two preseason games. Uh, and we know that there's clearly an upside for both. We expect great, great things from Jameis Winston, and I see no reason to believe otherwise. Uh, but just based on going off the first couple of games uh, in this preseason, understanding that both teams could potentially struggle this year, although Skip has far more faith in Tampa Bay than I do at this particular moment in time. In the end, when you see a couple of franchises on the come up and you've got a young quarterback, Mariota seems to be... Uh, a, a bit safe right now because I don't I don't see him as a guy that's going to be turning the ball over and I don't see him as a guy that's going to have a low completion percentage. So I'll give him the edge right now, but obviously I don't think he's better than Jameis Winston in the long haul. I still think Jameis Winston's going to be the man. I hear what you're saying about Mariota. I will be the first to admit, though I was down on him going into the draft, he has had some impressive early flashes. I do think he will start turning the ball over more than you think he will when the real games commence. And yet, even early on through two preseason games, my eye test and my field test says Jameis Winston all day and last night, all night. Stephen A. I, I know I don't want to overreact to just one preseason game that happened to be on our network, 
but I love the way Jameis immediately took over that game and that crowd in his first ever home game before that crowd. I realize that Cincinnati probably played a lot of vanilla defense, especially in the first two series before they began to blitz a little bit more. And I realized that if this had been Cincinnati on opening day, that Jameis Winston would have gotten a whole lot of different looks thrown in his face. I get all that. But I'm, I'm going to hark back to what Vincent Jackson told Lisa on the sideline last night after he was finished playing. She said, what's the biggest thing you love about Jameis? And he said, energy. Jameis has energy that Marcus Mariota does not give off. He, Jameis has spirit. He's got spark. He's got a million watt smile that Marcus doesn't have to, to generate leadership in Tennessee the way Jameis is already generating it for this fairly moribund team in Tampa, a team that was 2-14 and 14 last year that needed contagious leadership to rub off on everybody. And Jameis, to my eyes, already rubbing off on a team that, remember, was 0-8 at home last year. And the year before, they were 3-5 and 5 at home. So that's a combined, what, 3-13 and 13 over the last two years at home. And that can create, as you well know, contagious apathy among your fandom. It, it looked kind of sparsely attended last night, especially early. It looked like a very late arriving crowd. And I know it's just the, the first preseason game at home. But Jameis Winston's going to be a lightning rod for this franchise. And what, what I love the most, Stephen A., was that he dictated at the line of scrimmage like a young Peyton Manning right out of the box last night. I do not think this can be underestimated. And you and I have talked about this before. Look, Jameis did so much dumb stuff at Florida State. Don't even get me started on the crab legs and the incident where he stood up on the table at the student union. We know about all that. We can go on and on. Dumb, 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 dumb. And it detracted from the fact that Jameis Winston is a brilliant operator of an offense. I, I in fact, think Jimbo Fisher was a little confining for Jameis. I, I think they, they sort of butted heads over who's running this offense, who's dictating, who's calling the plays, because Jimbo likes to rule with an iron fist of his offense. And all of a sudden, I saw Jameis just changing plays and, and play. He was going Peyton Manning on the starters of the Cincinnati Bengals. Again, vanilla looks, I get all that. But that's impressive to me, as is deadly accuracy that I have not always seen from Marcus Mariota. Deadly accuracy. And Jameis will fit balls through tight windows, and I know he takes too many risks, but he's learning on the fly. And I thought he played pretty flawless football last night. And when it is time, even though he's not the smooth athlete that Mariota is, as you aptly point out, rolling right, rolling left, when it's time and he needs to make an athletic play, we saw Jameis go ahead and bolt out to the right and dive for the pylon and score. He's capable. We saw it at Florida State. Well, he has some mobility. So the, the total package, the intangibles package, man, I am Jameis all day. Well, I'm Jameis all day as well, but the question was about the first two preseason games because from a macro perspective, both you and I share the same sentiments. We believe he's big time. We believe his energy is infectious, and we believe at the quarterback position, when you talk about a leader of men, he's better suited for the job. It's not to knock Mariota and not to say that there's something deficient in him, and I think that's the, that's the, that's the wrong interpretation that people take from comparing Jameis Winston and, and Marcus Mariota and talking about the element of leadership it's not like it's not that the Mariota is devoid of leadership it's that when you talk about personnel in the National Football League the kind of athletes that come into the league the distractions that are presented to them the temptations that ultimately distract them and what have you when you talk about somebody capable of galvanizing the troops you know you're talking about a guy like Jameis Winston that you want behind center because he's about winning 
and he's about being in your face and making sure to hold you accountable just like he'll hold himself accountable. You can't, uh, even though I'm quite sure Mariota will talk to guys, he'll converse with them, he'll do those kind of things. Could you imagine being somebody on a squad with Jameis Winston and you're being lackadaisical when it comes to coming out there on a Sunday afternoon and giving a full-fledged effort? Mariota might call you out. But is it going to be in the same fashion as a Jameis Winston? Mm. Are you going to be held accountable by the guy behind center with Mariota the same way that you're going to be held accountable by a Jameis Winston? These are the kind of things that we alluded to when you talk about football leadership on the field and galvanizing the troops and maximizing their potential. So when I look at it from that perspective, I think Jameis Winston is in a different class than Mariota. But for the purposes of this discussion, as it pertains to two preseason games, Mariota has been more proficient. He's been more proficient in terms of his completion percentage. And in the NFL, when everybody talks about keeping the turnovers to a minimum and being about the business of being an orchestrator, Jameis Winston is big play Jameis. Marcus Mariota seems to be somebody, Skip, that ultimately will pick you apart. I look at a Jameis Winston, and I think about whether it's the Troy Aikman's, Tony Romo's, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady's, people like that down the line. When I look at a Marcus Mariota, I think about the late, great Kenny Stabler. I think about a Tom Brady. I think about guys who are like surgeons and systematically goes about the business of picking you apart. Does that mean that they'll be less effective in most in most instances? Yes. In some instances, no. But I, that's why we put Jameis Winston as number one. But when I look at the Tennessee Titans and what they need, I can understand why they've got a lot of faith in Marcus Mariota because I think he's going to be an upgrade compared to what they're accustomed to. Yeah. And he's going to be what they need in terms of consistency and somebody who's trustworthy and reliable. Okay. I, I hear all you just said. And it's still, as Molly pointed out, extremely early. By all accounts, Marcus Mariota has come out of his shell. He could be pretty quiet. He could be a little bit standoffish from his teammates, not in a bad, not in an arrogant way, just in a shy way. And by all accounts in Tennessee, he's trying to pick it up. He's trying to take over. He's trying to be a little more outgoing. And, and I got those vibes watching him the other night in his second preseason games, mm -hmm. game that he is trying to be more of an, uh, an obvious leader. I don't know if you can force that. I don't know if that will continue to play well for his teammates once the actual games commence because I, I still wonder about Mariota's feel for operating an offense. You, you talked about the slice and dicers. I, I'm not sure he has that in him. He, he operated a, a beautiful fast break attack, that quack attack at Oregon, and it just came at you so fast that the defense was constantly on its heels. He ran that beautifully. And they'll have an element of that in the Tennessee attack, but, but it won't quite be that. I just don't think he'll be as consistently accurate. And I do see him as he did the other night. He got flustered. He threw an interception that was dropped. I'm just saying, I think Jameis is, is in this next, he's a cut above, an echelon above Mariota. I'm not saying Mariota's going to be a bust, but I think he will struggle longer and harder than Jameis will. Possibly, possibly. We'll see. All right, so we're both taking Jameis all day, but Stephen A. thinks that Mariota looks a little more proficient through the first two preseason games, and, and Skip is taking Jameis there. You can see them both. Uh, Mariota's playing Friday, Titans at Chiefs, and then Saturday, Jameis and the Bucks host the Browns. And, of course, we're all circling September 13th, first regular season game. It's the Titans at Tampa Bay Bucks in Raymond James Stadium, so that'll be a fun one. We move on to Aaron Rodgers, though, now, and the news that the Packers were hoping not to have confirmed was, in fact, confirmed. Confirmed yesterday, Jordy Nelson did tear his ACL and he is done for the season. Rodgers and Nelson have hooked up for 39 TDs in the last four seasons. This is the third most of any quarterback wide receiver duo.